Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. You can go to the book of Hosea, if you please. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Amen. Hosea, chapter 4. I'm going to read one verse of Scripture to you. And then find the place over in Matthew, chapter 6, verse 10. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. You know, knowledge is imperative. If you don't know, you can't believe. And if you've heard the opinions and the theories of men and women, you're not going to be a recipient of the Word of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, many people, they take, and we thank God for grandmas, grandpas, and moms, and dads. Amen? Amen. But if they give you something and it's not scripture, I remember years ago, and I won't say who, who in the family told me, but many years ago, someone in the family, I was a kid, and I said, can I pray with my eyes open, like, just like I talk to you with my eyes open? I would like to communicate with the Lord throughout the day. And I asked someone this years ago as a kid. And they told me, no, you can't do that. You have to close your eyes. Well, see, when I heard that from this, this saint of God, that put the light out inside of me. Because you can watch and pray. The, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Amen. And so, the Bible says, watch and pray. That's right. Did you know you can pray all day to the Lord? You can pray in your automobile. You can pray at home, walking, cleaning clean the house. You can pray. You can pray on the job. God hears you all the time. I said that to you to say this. Many people, just as I, Tina, I received what a saint told me many years ago, and I believed it. Make sure that you're reading the Word of God. Yes. Because if you don't have the Word of God, you're going to have something else. Right. Amen? Right. And, and see, the opinions and the theories of men and women, they are put out the light. They will. And the Bible says in Psalms, the entrance of thy words giveth light. Right. Amen? And so when you read the word of God, light comes. And so Paul told Timothy, a young pastor, he told Timothy, he said, preach the word. Amen. Amen. And so that's what we are to give out is the word of God because the word of God is food. Amen. 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 Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So what natural food is to your flesh, your body, the Word of God is to your spirit. So make sure that you do your feeding times building your spirit up. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. The Lord is good. Now, God said in Hosea 4, 6, that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So make sure that you receive knowledge. How, Brother Dennis, do I receive knowledge? This. That's right. Amen. That's Many people are deceived because someone knocked on their door and gave them something opposite from this. That's right. You will never be deceived if you know the word. Amen. If you don't know the word, you're open for deception. That's right. With that in mind, I want to share with you this morning well, where does sickness come from? How to stand against it. And if you would, go with me, please, to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Did you know you can stand against anything that is opposite from the Word of God and God's will? Remember, somebody says, but I want to be in the will of God. This is the will of God. Right. You would never know the will of God, with me. Amen. Kaylee, until you know this. Amen. 
If you don't know the, if you don't know the word of God, you will never know the will of God. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now you there in Matthew chapter six, verse ten. Let's just begin to read. Well, let's just read verse nine and ten. After this manner, therefore, pray you, our Father. I like how he said, our Father. It makes it intimate. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, there's no corruption in heaven. There's no dying in heaven. Yeah, we're going to leave this this, this body's fall. It's going to run out of gas. It's going to die. It's going to expire. But make sure you're right on the inside because you go to one of two places. Right. The saint of God goes to heaven. The one that doesn't believe or follow the Lord Jesus Christ goes to a devil's hell. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus said, Thy will be done in earth, in earth as it is in heaven. So God wants His will consummated upon the earth. How is God's will going to be consummated in the earth? Through us. Right. Amen. Through you sharing the word of God and doing the word of God. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I remember, I'm going to take you somewhere, so stay with me because I'm going to give you scripture uh, this morning, some good scripture. But I remember years ago, and I posted it, I had a man that was sharing on his, on his Facebook, YouTube page, about how the Lord healed him of a stroke. He had all the symptoms of a stroke. And he just started claiming the word of God and, and, and put up a resistance on the inside in his spirit. And it just left. The side of his body became normal again. Wow. And so I remember, I believe it was May of 2019, I went down to Pensacola, Florida, and I was, uh, my sister moved from Pensacola. She sold her house there. She got promoted with the government, and so she moved to Biloxi, the Iberville, Biloxi area. And she was getting rid of some things, so I went there in a trailer and picked up some things that she was giving me. And I was on the Mobile Bridge. And while I was on the Mobile Bridge, I couldn't, but my, my speech, I wanted to talk and say some things to Nikki, and I couldn't say, a, I couldn't, my speech was a, was slur. I couldn't get out of my mouth what I wanted to say. Uh, and I tried it again, and I couldn't go ahead. I was trying to say something, but I couldn't do it. Now, I'm okay. I can drive. I have Nikki and Micah in the vehicle. And Micah wasn't very old at that time. And so, just a, a couple months old. And so, uh, or three. And so, I couldn't speak. And so, the first thing that I started that came to me was the Word of God. Are you listening to me? Amen. I couldn't speak, but I could quote 1 Peter 2, 24, that I quoted thousands of times, I'm sure. If not thousands, hundreds. It's got to be in the thousands over the years. That's my favorite, one of my favorite verses of Scripture. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Well, see, these things just don't fall on you like ripe apples falls off of a tree. Right. You have God has His part to play, but you have yours. Right. If you don't do your part, He doesn't do, do His. And thank you, Lord. Here's what the Lord just gave me. The sinner has a part to play in His salvation. If He doesn't yeah. do His part, God doesn't do His part. See, there's, you have a part to play, and God has a part to play. And many people just put, here's religion. Can I stop for a minute? This is religion. If God wants to do it, he'll do it. They take all the responsibility and put it on God. That's right, man. That's religious. It sounds good. 
No, you have a part, and God has a part. Amen. Right. And so I begin to quote 1 Peter 2, 24. I knew it was a tack of the devil. I'm driving on the Mobile Bridge, and I begin to say, inside of me, I resist you, devil, in the name of Jesus. I resist this stroke. I resist this attack in Jesus' name. But I still couldn't, my blood, well, I still couldn't talk. But I could quote 1 Peter 10, 24. Wow. And so, but I put a resistance up. So somebody said, Ashley, what, is, what, is, what are you talking about a resistance? Well, let me give you an example. Say I come to Essie and Jason's house. And I says, Jason, Essie, I'm going to be in control of your finances this week. <laughs> See what I mean? What did Essie and Jason just do? They just put up a resistance on the inside. Amen. Well, see, that's what I'm talking about. Don't just so be quick to, to accept everything. When you open your spirit to certain things, you just accept it. That's right. So I'll put a resistance in here. And I would quote 1 Peter 2, 24. And believe God that it's true. I act like the Bible's true. And when you act like the Bible's true, it becomes true. Reason why it doesn't work for many people because they take sides against it. If it doesn't happen immediately, they say, well, it's not the will of God. God said, thy will be done in earth. Thank you, Lord. Here's what the Holy Spirit just gave me to give you. I'm his ambassador. You are too. Amen. He wants me looking good for him. He wants you. You are an ambassador for the kingdom. He wants you representing him with joy, yes. in love, yes. but he wants you representing him, the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. Yes. You are a representative. You are an ambassador for the kingdom of God. Right. Amen. Amen. And so, you're going to always be attacked as you own, as long as you live for God. But the victory is ours. You have to, you possess it by faith. And then it becomes a reality. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He wants his will consummated upon the earth. And the way that is consummated in the earth is preaching the word of God. Right. Not my, I'm not here to give you my opinion or my theory, and I'm not here to hear yours. Amen? Amen. Somebody says, but this didn't happen. I believe God. I'm sorry. I believe God's word first. That's right. It's just like years ago, listen to me. Years ago, my oldest son, Billy, couldn't use the bathroom. He was around Mason's age. Maybe a little older. Between Mike and Mason. He couldn't use the bathroom. Now, let me stop here and say this for the record. We are not against doctors. That's right. Did you hear me? If I am struggling from receiving from God, if I haven't received in a certain time, I'm headed to the doctor. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but Asa sought the physicians first. He was diseased in his feet and he died. Seek God first. Amen. And there was a time I didn't know if I was going to die or live, but that's fine. I believe God. I see him the next morning. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those who trust in him. Sometimes God might wait to put you all out the end of the limb where no one can come to your rescue but God. And when you are faithful in believing at the end, the Holy Ghost shows up. The snap of the finger, if it, God doesn't move when they think he should move, they say, well, it wasn't his will. Right. It is his will for his church. Oh, thank you, Lord. Here's what the Holy Ghost just gave me to give you. He sent the church against sickness and disease when he was on the earth. He gave power to his 12, to the 70, and then he told them when he rose again, these signs shall follow them that believe to his church. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus was against it. The twelve were against it. The seventy were. And then, after he rose again, he said, I'm giving you power. Amen. Who? Amen. His church. Amen. 
But the church hasn't preached the word throughout the centuries. They've listened and accepted many of the doctrines of men and women. And they watered it down. But the word is still so today. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Well, when I'm on that Mobile Bridge, I'm, we made it to Chick-fil-A in Mobile to get something to eat. And when I made it to Chick-fil-A, it was around, I guess, 35, 40 minutes from there with traffic. So uh, I was completely healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. I could talk normal again. I could say anything I wanted to say. Completely healed. Amen. Look, oh, thank you, Lord. Here's what the Lord gave you. The ten lepers, as they went, they were healed. Amen. That's right. Sometimes you just got to go believe in God. Amen. Amen. It's not going to be handed to you on a silver platter. Right. You've got to act your faith. Mm -hmm. If you believe, you will. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Jesus said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in yeah. heaven. Now look with me, you have something that many Christians don't know they have, and it's in Matthew chapter 16. Go with me to Matthew chapter 16 real quickly. And I'm going to say this because it just came to me. You're going to need this message. All right. This is reality. That's right. If, if you don't receive it from your heart, the enemy is going to love when he comes to your house. You know, it's just like one, I heard this from a minister. One guy came up to him and was holding a meeting. And he says, brother, I want you to pray for me. He said, what for? That I'll not have no more problems with the devil. Yeah, why did he say that? <laughs> he said, do you want me to pray that you die? <laughs> <laughs> the only way that you and I are not going to have no more problems with the devil is when we get to glory. Right. The Bible says over there in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 89, be sober, be vigilant, because you're out of the Sarah, your neighbor. Nope. That's no. not what it says. No. Is it? But the devil will use your neighbor. <laughs> no, your every your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And you know who he really loves to devour? Those that don't have knowledge. Come on, right. I remember years ago, I didn't have knowledge, and the devil tried to get me to hurt my mother and hurt myself. I didn't have no knowledge. I, I knew it was a demon spirit of oppression. Now, this is before I was at church, but the Lord was drawing me down. Glory to God. Jesus said, no man can come to me unless my Father draw me. Right. You're here this morning because the Holy Ghost and the angels drew you here. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. You say, no, it wasn't by accident. Amen. Amen. Well, I didn't know. I knew that was a demon spirit. I just come out of the bar and the hall. And, and the Lord was drawing me. And all of a sudden, I felt oppression come upon me to hurt my mother and to hurt myself. But I would not entertain it. That's right. See, the devil just can't just come into you without you allowing it. Amen. Amen. And so now I know to use the name of Jesus. Yes. I know to use the word of God to go. <laughs> Amen. The word of God belongs to you. Right. Amen. Right. Can you? Amen. The word of God belongs to you. Amen. Right. When the devil comes to this kill, steal, and destroy, you use the word. Amen. You use the name yes. of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, look here with me at Matthew 16, 18, and 19. When Jesus speaks, I listen. Amen? Amen. Yes. And I say, verse 18, Matthew 16. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now somebody says, now that was the apostles. No. This belongs to the church. Right. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys. Here's what you have. Here's the keys that you and I have. Of the kingdom of heaven. Ooh, Amen. Hallelujah. I, carry, I use those keys every day. <laughs> and whatsoever you shall bind on earth or stop. It shall be bound or stopped in heaven. Right. And whatsoever you 
shall loose or permit on earth shall be loose or permitted in heaven. Amen. See, a lot of times we're praying when we shouldn't be praying at all. We got keys right here, and you should find the devil. Amen. You should take the keys. Amen. Amen. It's been given to you. Many people never take the keys. Out. See, if, if, if somebody has blessed you with a fine automobile and they said, here, I'm giving you the keys. And you never took that key and cranked that automobile up, then keys really do you no good. Not at all. <laughs> Many people have keys to the kingdom, but they go around defeated because they don't, they don't use the keys that's been given to them. I use the keys that's been given to me. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I give them to you. You, the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. I have keys. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> I remember years ago, no wonder. See, when you use the keys, the devil knows you're using them. Amen, Daddy. Amen, Amen Tommy. Amen. And there was this lady. Now, she didn't come to Cornerstone where I passed her daddy McGee. You know uh, her name was uh, Bridget. And her mama and her sister at one time came. And they said she's hearing voices and seeing images in her house. Now, I did not know her. And I said, well, just tell her to come to church and I'll minister to her. Well, she's hearing voices. And she audible like you hear me speak. And she's seeing images. And they tell her her house is dirty. Her sister said, well, I was over her house. She said, you see that man over there? He's telling me my house is dirty. Well, she didn't hear anything or see anything. Well, I said, well, tell her to come to church and I'll minister to her. Well, she ended up coming to church, but uh, I want to share this with you. The devil knows if you have used your keys because she heard a voice say to her, stay away from Dennis Phillips. She thought, who is Dennis Phillips? So she, excuse me, she punched me my name in on the internet and she said, well, that's the preacher down at Cornerstone. And she told me a letter. She said, it said your name like it didn't like you. Amen. Well, the devil doesn't like those that move in the word and in the spirit. And so she ended up coming to church. I cast those things out of her. And she was completely set free. This was in 2014. Either she told me a week later or two weeks later. Well, I, I, I touched base with her the, the following week. She says, Brother Dennis, I was almost committed to the institution. Mm. And her husband told me I got my wife back. Now, and she heard the audible voice stay up. She said, it said your name like it didn't like you. Why? Because I used the keys. Amen. Do you use the keys? Amen. The devil doesn't like this message. When he comes and he brings ungodly thoughts to your mind, or if you have symptoms to hit your body that you don't have, and all of a sudden you get a symptom out of the blue, whether in the knees, the side, the head, I've had them everywhere. Amen. And immediately I say, devil... It is written in James 4, 7. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I resist you. Go from me in Jesus' name. Some elite leave immediately and some will come and go. But as they come back, I will stand my ground. Amen. 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 Yes. Right. <clears throat> Stand your ground. These keys belong to you. Listen to this. Verse 19. And I will, Jesus Christ is speaking, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind or stop on earth shall be bound and stopped in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose or permit on earth shall be loose or permitted in heaven. Yeah. Exactly. It belongs to you. Yeah. Right. The devil, is the devil harassing you? Put him on the run. Yeah. Amen. 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 Put him on the run. Yes. I remember years ago hearing about a situation. Another minister. I told you about that minister that had a stroke, and I told you about the devil trying to put one on me. And well, I remember years ago hearing about a minister. He was holding a, a meeting in Assembly of God Church, and. I forget, he called it. You know how they always have these names on the flu? Yeah. You know, they name them like they name hurricanes. Yeah. Well, he said either it was the Hong Kong flu or Asian flu that came out. Well, anyway, he, we'll say Asian. 
And he said, it broke out. And he said, I'm holding a meeting. And attendance fell off. Melvin, the attendance fell off. Well, he said, uh, he got up behind the pulpit. And he says, I don't mind telling you I'll never have the Asian flu. This minister that was holding a meeting at the Assembly of God Church. And, and the pastor came up to him. And he says, He said, yes. I wouldn't say that if I was you. Fear. Fear. He said, why? Don't you know the devil I hear you? Yeah. He said, yes. I said it for his benefit. Amen. See, so many people got their praise. That's why many ministers don't move in the spirit. They're scared they're going to get attacked. Come on. All right. But you have authority when you are attacked. Yeah. Yeah. You have authority. Well, he said this. He said that night I went to bed. He's standing in the parsonage. He's a guest speaker. He said every symptom of the Asian flu came upon him. Every symptom. Wow. He says, no, you don't, devil. The Bible says in James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He said, I resist you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bind you command you to go from me in Jesus' name. He stood his ground there for a little bit, you know, for a little bit, and he said every symptom left his body. Somebody said he had it. No, he didn't. He never accepted it. That's right. He left it. Still, thank you, Lord. Here's what the Holy Spirit just gave you. Have, have you done all to stay and stand? Amen. You keep standing believing. Amen. 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 Because, thank you, Lord, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And we need to act like the greater one lives in us. Amen. When you don't act like it, he doesn't do nothing. Yeah. It just stays good. But when you begin to act and talk like the one in you is greater than the devil and demons that's in the world, he'll rise up big in you. Right. And he'll put you over. Right. Hallelujah. I remember Pam that just lifted in her hand there. Pam, the wife of Troy. She come in one time. I think you called it excruciating pain. They come, they was coming to church the Sunday night. They came Sunday morning. They went to eat at the Hubble house, right? They come back that evening. She says, Brother Dennis, I'm in excruciating pain. I met him there at the foyer, rebuked the devil, commanded to go. Instantly left and she was healed. Amen. What happened? She was attacked. Why did I know to do that? Because I know God is, a, she's an ambassador for the kingdom. Amen. 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 She's an ambassador. God wants you walking around like this. Praise the Lord. I have people come up to you and I'll take what you've got. <laughs> Amen. You know what I tell them? I said, it's a good dose of Jesus. Right. It's a good dose of the Holy Ghost. It's Jesus. You just got to drink it. You got to keep drinking of the new wine. Keep drinking of the new wine. Hallelujah. Keep drinking of the new wine. What? Spirit food. It's spirit food. Hallelujah. Well, you got the keys. If you don't do nothing with the keys, they don't amount to a hill of beans. Amen. Amen. When you are attacked, and you might be attacked when you leave here, the devil's going to see if you receive it. <laughs> you remember about the sower of the seed that went forth to sow? And Jesus said, it's the word of God. Some fell among thorns, some fell upon stony ground. Amen. Right. See, you got to act. you got to use the word. And when you do, the Holy Ghost will rise up big in you. Feed right. on the Word of God. Amen. Now look with me, please, to Acts 10, 38. We're getting our minds renewed this morning. Acts 10, 38. Praise God forever. You have the keys to the kingdom. They belong to you as a child of God. Acts 10, 38. Let's read it. How God... God the Father anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with them. Now who is the oppressor? The devil. The devil. Who is the healer? According to that verse of scripture, Jesus Christ is. Amen. 
So you've got to be able to remove, listen to me, the mental block. Because as long as there's a mental block, you have no faith to believe God. Come on. Well, thank you, Lord. Listen to this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Acts of the Apostles in the Word of God show Jesus the healer. Amen. That's right. See, as long as there's a mental block there, you're not going to have faith to receive a miracle. Because the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How does doubt and unbelief come? By hearing the opinions and the theories of men and women. Make sure, make sure you're hearing the word. Well, the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, that Satan is the oppressor. And Jesus is the deliverer. Amen. Amen. So now you know who to resist when you are attacked. Now I'm going to take Daniel. Somebody comes to Daniel's house and they say, Daniel, I'm fixing to move all your furniture out. I'm fixing to come and steal your furniture. Now Daniel's not just going to say, please don't do it. No, don't do it. And try to talk him out of it. He's going to get shot up. <laughs> or Tina is one. Many times us Christians, when the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, we just say, God, help. Yeah. And God is saying, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Get rid of that demon spirit. Right. What are you going to see? The devil couldn't even come into me unless I entertained him when I was a kid, a teenager. He wanted me to kill my mother and kill myself. I didn't know how to get rid of those thoughts, but I knew I wasn't going to hurt my mother because I love my mom. I just love my mom. <laughs> hey, I love God. Praise God. And uh, but I knew that was a demon spirit. I was even now if I would have entertained him, I wouldn't be here today. Right. Some of the most holy saints of God have had thoughts to come to their minds that their heart resented. And if you don't know that's the devil, that's why people have you heard somebody say, What got into them? I tell you what got into them. That is, they entertained a demon spirit that came to them. And they did that. Whether it was suicide or whether it was murder or whether it was an ungodly sin. See, you can't keep thoughts from coming from the you can't keep the devil from bringing thoughts to you, but you can keep from entertaining them. Yeah. Oh, some of the most holy saints of God have had thoughts to come to their minds that their heart was in. But you just resist them. Amen. And you resist symptoms that hit your body. Amen. And spend your ground. Well, thank you, Lord. Here's what the Lord just gave me. Timothy told Timothy to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are to endure hardness. There might be times that you are in a battle. You're a soldier. Stay there. Be pretty sure it's coming. You might be there a minute. You might be there a day. You might be there a month. You might be there too. Stand your ground. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, I've heard this years ago. You might have heard it. Well, if I walk by faith, I'll never be attacked. Where'd you hear that from? <laughs> the faith message is we wrestle. Ephesians 6 will says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right. but against principalities, powers. Amen? Amen. Rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. No, walking by faith is resisting. Yes. Are you hearing me? Amen. It's coming to you. Attacks are coming to every one of us. Brother Dennis, now you're, you're saying something negative. No, I'm giving you reality. That's right. Come out of that world and live in reality. Amen. That's right. We'd be no need in having faith if we were not attacked, was it? And the Bible says, having done all the stand, stand. Keep resisting and watch God come in on your behalf and the victory is yours. Amen. Did he tell the truth or not? Yes, sir. Let's act like the Bible so, and when we act it, God's power goes to work. Amen. 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 Glory it's God. when we take sides against the holy commandment. When we take sides against it, it won't work for us. If you talk against this and take sides against it with your actions, it's not it stops. Right. I, I give you scripture with it. You remember the 14th chapter of Matthew? Jesus said, Peter said, Lord, is that you walking on the water? If it is you, Lord, can I come walk? Jesus, Jesus says, come. My, come on, Peter. So Peter, you know what Peter did? He acted. There's water 
It's impossible to walk on water. What did Peter do? He's getting out of the boat. Right. He's walking on water. Right. Till he got his eyes off Jesus, the Word, right. and looking at all the circumstances, the wind boisterous, the waves, and he began to sink. And Jesus was there in the flesh and called him. Amen. And Jesus said, O thou little thing, wherefore didst thou doubt? Doubt is a thief. That's right. You, even though you've got a doubt here, don't entertain it because you can have doubt in your head and faith in your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, your spirit, lean on to your own understanding. The devil's going to see to it that doubt comes here. Just ignore it. And just say, I believe. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you've been given the keys, you know that Satan is the oppressor and Jesus is the deliverer. Yes. Now, if you would please go with me to Luke chapter 13. I was going to put Luke 13 first before that verse of scripture, and the Lord told me to uh, reverse it. And so, I see now why he said reverse it. I like how he said that, reverse it. So I'm going to Luke chapter 13. We read Acts 10, 38. Jesus is the deliverer. Satan is the oppressor. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen? Amen. Now, look with me at Luke chapter 13, verse 10 through 17. Praise God. Luke 13, 10 through 17. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Jesus believed in being in church on the Sabbath. He was teaching, that's the cure for unbelief and doubt, is the word of God. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. Now, if anybody had a reason to miss church, Sheila, it was this woman. <laughs> bowed together for 18 years. But she was so faithful, Jesse. That she said, I'm going to church. Yes. She said, I'm going to the house of God, baby. Yes. Amen? Amen. And so she was there at church, bowed together now for 18 years, bowed together. Hallelujah. And then verse 12, and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, woman, Thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands in the plural on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now religious people don't like it when God's moving. Because in verse 14, And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and them therefore come and be healed. And not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his, his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? Look at verse 16. Ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low these 18 years, be loose? From this bond on the seventh day? Now who did Jesus say bound this woman? The devil. Notice he said she needed to be loose. He said I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Binding and loosing. Amen. 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 You've been given keys. Yes. Jesus used them. But he said hey I'll give them to you. That's my children. <laughs> oh thank you Lord. Let me say this what the Lord just gave me. He's the head. You're the body. Amen. Can you separate your head from your body? <laughs> if you do, you're dead. <laughs> the work of God that's upon the earth is through his body. That's right, amen. We take directions like the Lord speaking to me here. He's the head. The head spoke and the body just listened. Correct. You're the body. He's the head. Oh, thank you, Lord. Here's what the Lord just gave me. You have authority like he has authority. His body has no less than him. Amen. 
Now, your mind it rejects that, refutes it, because it's religious, and you've probably never heard that before. And here's what the Lord else just gave me right now. If you didn't have it, he wouldn't have told you in the 16th chapter That's right. of Mark to cast out devils if you didn't have it for it. Amen. That's right. Amen. He's the head of the body. I remember years ago, because of my gift, I was a nine ball gambler, and I played some of the best pool players in the world. And I've been on TV, and I've been in the pool in Beaver's Magazines, Beaver's Digest, and played and been around with some of the best pool players in history. And if I would have kept on, I'm sure I would have. I believe I would have been the best. Well, thank God for His Spirit. Amen. I could have been lost in a devil's hell. But what's greater than any natural gift is the gifting of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You've been given great authority. It's yours. It belongs to you. So I got saved and I went to, to get my GED because I dropped out and I had someone with money to stake me and I would play in tournaments and he said we're going to go across the country gambling. But thank God Jesus has another plan for me. Praise God. <laughs> thank you. Hallelujah. Because that's nothing compared to what he's used me in helping lives. Amen. 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 Well, I went to take my GD when me and mother lived over at Fox Run Apartments in Pearl. And I thought, you know, I need to get my diploma. So I went there and I went. I went. See, if you don't pray and seek God, he'll let you do things on your own. So I held one part in that GD. So they said, you can come back and take it. And I said, this time, I said, Lord, you said in your word, those that are... Those that are joined unto the Lord are one spirit. I said, Lord, I'm one spirit with you. And I'm going to take that GED, that other part that I failed. And now, now I'm not being arrogant. I said, Lord, if I fail it, that's because you failed it too, because we're one. Yeah. We're one. <laughs> well, see, I talk to the Lord like I talk to you. I don't like religion. God, we come to you today. That puts me off. God knows what I sound like at home talking to my wife. He knows what I sound like when I talk to other people. So I, I'm more closer to him than I am to anybody else. So I talk to him like I talk to you. Amen. 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 Yes. And I says, Lord, if I fail it now, that's because you failed it too. You can't fail. And so I thank you, Lord, I'm going to pass that GED today. So I went, and they got us on a time clock. And I, and I knew, I'm not even none of these little circles uncertain. Amen. Amen, sir. <laughs> and so, and she said, you got five minutes. Well, I'm a slow reader because I like to take in what I read. I read it slow. And so, amen. And so, I just started circling them. Theta, I just started circling them. I wouldn't believe none of them circle. But I went in there believing that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Thank you, Lord. I, it's, I passed it. I'm not going to fail it because you can't fail it. They sent me my diploma. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the Lord good. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves you. Amen. You're his child. That's right. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm just going to give you something the Lord just gave me. By God giving you Jesus, the greatest gift of all, you think he would give you anything less? That's right. Amen. He's giving you and I the best. Amen. Yes, he did. Why would he give you something less than that? Amen. Because of the traditions, what we've heard over the years. Well, it's not the will of God for you to have that. If you've got the word, it is the will. Amen. Now, he doesn't say in his word, you're going to have 10 old wells. You're going to have two, uh, th three uh, Lamborghinis. And... <clears throat> now, some people take and they're shipwrecked. They hear the faith message one time and they they make shipwreck of it and they can very confuse people with it. No, if you got the word of God and what it promises you. Yeah. Amen. He did say I'll supply all your need. Amen. And more than enough. Somebody says, What's the word rich mean? It means when you can help others. That's right. Amen. The word rich means an abundant supply. God's taking care of your needs. 
And now he'll bless you. Buy them some groceries. Come on. Amen. Amen. Listen, I know there's people out there. There's people that go to the extreme on baptism. There's the people that go to the extreme on salvation. You can't be saved because you don't go to my church or you wouldn't baptize my way. There's people that go to the extreme on healing. There's people that go to the extreme on faith. That's why we stay in the middle of the road and be balanced. That's right. I remember years ago, the Lord gave me this knowledge about devils. About being staying in the middle of the road. There's some on the ditch way over here. They're in the ditch because they don't even believe in casting out devils. They're in the ditch. And then there's some over here that's in the ditch like everything's a devil. Well, there's a lot. But the Lord did bring this to me. He said, at least those over there that's on this side of the ditch, they're getting a little success. But these over here can never have no more. Because the devil is behind a lot. So what we're going to do, we're going to stay in the middle of the road. How do you stay in the middle of the road? By the word. Amen. By the word. If you don't know this, you need this more than that TV program. Amen. You need this more than anything. If you don't have this, you're not going to be strong in your fight when the devil does come. Amen. Amen. Well, you've got the keys. The woman that was bound together for 18 years, Jesus loosed her. It loosed her from that infirmity, and it was Satan who bound her. Amen. Amen. Now, last verse of scripture is in Luke verse 16. We're going to end here. I mean, Luke chapter 10, excuse me. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20. And the 70 returned again with joy. Now, that's why God, God wants you full of joy. Yes, he does. Amen. He wants you happy. Amen. Yes. Smile. <laughs> Praise God. I they used to think I was on drugs at the cable company. <laughs> they did. They did. I remember a guy named Aaron. I won't call his last name. I, back, I was over at Cross Park Apartments. And I had a long thing. And I backed into this truck. And I did. Oh, man. I can't believe I did that. I'm a pretty good driver, you know. But everybody makes mistakes. And I had a call, so they're sending me to get a drug test. He looked at me and said, we're going to find out now. <laughs> well, because I was always happy. I come to work on joy. How y'all doing this morning? Now, that was the cable company. When I worked at Piper Chevrolet before that, they called my supervisor and they said, Phil, we believe Dennis is on drugs. He said, why? He said, he saw us 30 minutes later coming in here and saying, how y'all doing this morning? He sees us again another 30 minutes later saying the same thing to us. Nobody's that happy at work. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is what gives happiness. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Jesus is what makes me smile when all hell is coming against me on the right, the left, in front of me and behind me. You would never have known it. But I'm like, how are you doing today? God is good, amen? Well, I'm acting the greater ones in me. He's taking care of us. Hallelujah. I just met the greater one in me. 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Now act like it. And watch him go to work. Amen. Last verse of scripture. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Jesus saw him get kicked out of heaven, thumped out of heaven like lightning. And Jesus said this, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on scorpions, serpents, and over all. Somebody say all. All. The power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, look at this, like this is just common. Jesus said, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. My name, Robert Jeff, is written in heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
You've been given authority. Michelle, you've been given authority. Let's use it. You know, years ago, I, I've seen so many black widows. I've seen hundreds of them. I want to say thousands. Some will just say hundreds. I got bit and didn't know it. Now, I didn't play with it. You go around playing with snakes and black widows and these poisonous spiders, I'm going to have somewhere to go. And that's to the hospital or your funeral. Right here. But if you're accidentally bit, and so I went down there, and them black widows, I've seen so many of them go down into the dark pedestal when I would open it up. And so one day, I guess I was in a hurry. And when I was in a hurry, I guess one must have bit me. He put perfectly bullseye with a dot, perfectly round on my hand. And I got home. I thought at first I rubbed up against something, David, but it wouldn't wash off. And I realized I must have got bit by a black widow. But the next day is gone. No soreness at all. The Lord took care of me. But now, hold on. I didn't go to play with it to prove something. You don't tempt the Lord your God. Amen. But God said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any, this is how precious you are to him. And nothing by any means shall hurt you, his beloved. That is, if you walk with it, you can't walk out there in the world and live in sin and expect these things. Amen? But Jesus sure does love you. Amen? I sure do love you. And your neighbor next to you loves you. Amen? Well, let's all stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Before Sister Sherry comes up, Sister Sherry, you can come sit on the front row if you like. Um, I want every, every head bowed, every eye closed. Before we leave today, if your heart's not right with Jesus, just make sure you're right with Him before you leave the house of God. If you say, with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If that's you, you say, preacher, I need you to pray for me. I want to get my life right with Jesus Christ. Can you lift your hand up real quickly where I can see it? And put it right back down. Thank you. You put it down. Thank you. You put it down. Thank you. You can put it down. Anybody else? Say, pray for me, preacher. I want to get my life right with Jesus. We serve an awesome God. Now, before you leave, don't leave yet because you're going to have a chance to hug someone's neck. And, and shake someone's hand. Sister Sharon, would you come up, please? Kristen, I showed you what the attendance was today. Yes, ma'am. I forgot to count Sarah's baby, and I forgot to count the pastor. <laughs> so we have 100 people here today. <laughs>